Today we are in Joss at Zimbiri Outreach, actually at Gidan Counter, which is where some of the children live. And when we came visiting today, I saw them having a class with a few students and I was so, I mean, I was just inspired to find out that many of them are actually being prepared for secondary school. And um, I was able to capture a very, very inspiring story which I'd like to bring to you today. My name is Dr. Hannah Tukwashi. I am a medical doctor and I've been practicing for the past three years. I just finished my national youth service and I'm currently working with my mom at Zambiri Child Care and Outreach Center. I help to teach children and um, also to help them with Sunday school, reading and other subjects that I know very well. It came naturally because all my life um, We've never as a family lived just as our own nuclear family. We've always lived with people. And uh, my mom has always helped many people. Um, so it just came naturally for me to be able to be of help in Zambiri because I realized that um, there's always something you can teach someone and there's always something you know better than someone. And that's how I've watched my parents, my mom, help us and teach us. I enjoy it from... Many years ago, I've always been a Sunday school teacher. So I've always taught children. I love children. I hope to be a pediatrician one day. Then with my mom's uh, ministry to the children, especially vulnerable, and orphan, vulnerable children and orphans, it just came as a soft spot to me. So I just started helping. And one thing I've realized with children is they're like an open canvas. You can teach them anything. So it's never about your profession or anything. It's about what you have to be able to give them. And they're always receptive to it, so I enjoy it. Well, I will share a bit with you about my mom's ministry from where I joined. Because if she was here, she'll start with when they got married and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it's a long time. So from when I remember, my mom has always helped people. Has always... People on the streets, different people. In fact, I remember um, my immediate younger brother one time came, no, we were at home, then a girl came to the house and said, my younger brother sent her from home, um, from school to come and meet my parents, that they will help her pay her school fees. Because he met her crying in the market, and she said um, she had no one to pay her school fees. Then he said, okay, come to our house, and somebody will help you pay. So she came, and my parents paid till she graduated, and she even finished from um, health school. So it has always been that way, with helping people. This came about um, some six, seven years ago. I remember she called me and told me that, do I remember the children she was helping a white woman look after? I said, yes. She said, well, the children are in trouble. I immediately called my dad. I said, daddy, we're in trouble. Because if mommy says the children are in trouble, I think this thing is going to bounce back on us. She doesn't wait to be told. She immediately offered. Then I came home for holiday and the house was full with children everywhere. This, then there wasn't the building of where they stay. The whole house was just full of children everywhere. You couldn't walk. It was a bit annoying at the beginning. But then she continued. And um, I've watched her over the years just evolve. Because then it's, it went on from just taking care of the immediate children she got, which were about 30-something in number. Then she said... Um, she started working with the community and realized that there are a lot of orphans and vulnerable children and she decided to feed them every day. She just decided, okay, let's cook and take the food to the community so children will come and eat. So every day we'll take food and then the children will come in their hundreds and we'll feed them. Then we now decided, or she decided, instead of them just coming, playing and going home, why don't we start teaching them? So it began with sharing them into classes, just teaching them anything with the volunteers there. And over time, it just kept growing, and now um, it has become a formal school for them. So it still runs as a free school. They get food every day, and then we run classes with them, try to teach them using the accelerated Christian education with formal education for them to learn. It's interesting to know that you'll see a child of um, 15 years who can't read or who doesn't even understand English properly. So you're actually starting from the scratch with them. So it's been tough, but we're getting somewhere.
every kind of person comes in the community. We've had, uh, we have a variety of children. We have um, single orphans, we have double orphans, we have the touching ones I've met are vulnerable children. I've always thought that orphans are the less privileged in the society, but I think it's the other way around. Vulnerable children are the most unfortunate in the society. And what is common in the community where we work is you find children with both parents alive, but the father is nowhere to be found. He's busy fending for himself with the mining they do and, um, or farming or just irresponsible. And then the mothers don't have time to look after the children. So we have a lot of um, those type of children. The people I'm teaching right now are people I'll call my younger brothers and sisters who live with us. They have been around for, they have lived with us now for the past six years. And I've realized that um, all of them are with, between the ages of 14 and 16. And they are still struggling with reading. Um, some have not yet gone to secondary school. Others are just entering secondary school. So I decided that since I'm free right now, let me just take them in intensive classes because I believe they will be able to learn how to read. For people who might want to be involved in this kind of work, the first thing I would like to ask you is why, ask yourself why you want to be involved in it. This work is not for the faint-hearted. <laughs> you have to make up your mind that you're going to help to the end in whatever way, whether it's short-term or long-term or in whichever way. So you have to get your priorities right and why you're doing what you're doing. Then the next thing is um, to just be involved. Avail yourself. There's nothing too little to give. There's nothing too small to give. It could be your time. It could be yourself. Another reason I want to say why I'm doing what I'm doing is because um, life is short and I don't think I'll be able to get this time again in my life because as I grow older, my life changes. My priorities are changing. I'll soon start work and things like that. And I won't have this time. And I don't want to live a life of regret. So do what you have to do at the time you have it because there won't be any other time again. One major challenge I've faced that I'm learning is um, when you're working with children like this, just know that you're doing it unto God because you're not going to get many thank yous. We've had issues. It's not as rosy as you think it is. You know, you're trying to impact in children's lives. So there are times when you're misunderstood. There are times when the children themselves are not ready for either a family or, you know, ready to be taught because of the abuse that they've been through. So one of the major things I've learned is that just do it with all your heart and unto God and know that God will reward you.